Hello guys and welcome back to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. Today we're going to get straight into today's video and we're headed to the home improvement store. But if you guys are new here, I would love for you to subscribe and join my channel. But now let's head straight into Lowe's. Okay, so the very first project we're gonna be working on is the gable for the outside of our house. I mentioned in our last home projects video, I felt like all the wood was on the right side of our house and there was nothing on the left. So that's definitely what we wanna work on today. So we went in knowing we wanted to get cedar wood this time. It is a little bit more than what we've been using on like our trash can fence and our planter boxes. But knowing this is going up high, we wanted a really good wood that would last a while because we definitely don't want to be taking this down or resanding it or anything while it's up so high. So we definitely went straight to the cedar. Not to mention it smells amazing down the aisle, so definitely check it out. But the smaller boards, this is the size we got for $6.67 and then the box bottom of the gable we wanted it to be a little bit wider because that's what I found most common on a Pinterest. Pinterest will definitely be your best friend and that piece was a little bit more. It ended up being $14.43 just because of the width but it was so worth it you're going to see at the end. So as far as measurements we can't help you too much. This is very up to how big you want it and what size roof you have but I'm going to help you out the best I can. While we we're down this aisle, I happened to notice these garage magnets, which I have on my house and in my Amazon store for $12. And at Lowe's, they were between $40 and $50. So if you're wanting something like that, click on my Amazon link. Do not buy them at Lowe's. And then we also had to pick up this pocket hole little thingy magic. <laughs> um, Chase thought this was going to be so much harder than what it was. And it actually ended up being one of the most simplest part of the project. So if you need to pick that up, definitely can. I think it was around $40, but when we had this priced out from like a contractor or a handyman to do this, they quoted us almost $1,200 and all in we spent about $84. So it's definitely worth it to buy the nicer wood and any of the equipment or tools you need because you're still going to be saving so much money versus hiring somebody else to do it. So Chase took cardboard to figure out the pitch of our roof. He learned that on a YouTube channel. So that's how we're taking almost all of our measurements. I also wanted to show you this folding table workbench. We got it off Amazon. It's like $75, but if you're short on space or don't have room, it's just so nice. It like pops up and down when you're doing projects. I feel like this is a great like birthday gift or Father's Day gift or Christmas gift. So if you definitely need a man gift, definitely look into that because it's just so nice you can tuck it away and then here are all the items we're going to be using to work on today's project I did want to mention that in that $84, it was so low because some of the items you're going to need, we already had from previous projects. So just keep that in mind. Your price may go up a little. However, it's not going to get anywhere near the $1,200 mark. So just to keep that in mind. And I also wanted to let you guys know this isn't super like beginner friendly. So if you've never done a project before, I highly suggest you start somewhere else and not on this gable. Definitely check out my planter box video. We also did a DIY like um, trash fence that was super easy. Definitely start off with one of those where you just have a straight simple cuts. This was the first time Chase was having to do angle cuts and we got it all done. I just don't think it's beginner friendly or if it is just know you're going to have to go in and take your time and figure things out. So I just wanted to let you guys know that in the very beginning. Thank you. 
Okay, say you're a beginner, but you want to tackle this project anyways. If you go in to Lowe's and you know the cuts you're gonna need, they will do your straight cuts for free, but they won't do angled cuts. Now you may need to borrow a friend or borrow a tool from a friend. Say you don't have access to those, you can rent those for the day and it's pretty affordable. And like I said, it's still gonna be cheaper doing it yourself and running those tools. But if not, just find somebody that can help you do it or has a tool you can borrow. But definitely make sure you're just measuring everything out before you cut it. Because once you cut it, you can't add it back on. So you rather make a cut too long and go shorter than just cut it too short and have to go back and buy wood. And then as you can see, Chase is just using the nail gun to hold this in place. And then here in a second, once we have this very basic frame started, we're gonna go ahead and take it out and put it on our house just to make sure everything's looking right before we go any further. And also keep in mind, all of these gables come in all different shapes and sizes. So if you don't like the style of ours, definitely get on Pinterest. They have all different ways you can make this. If this one seems too complicated, I feel like this is your most traditional farmhouse gable, but they do have easier, simpler ones. So if you're just wanting the wood element, but not wanting so many cuts, just go find one that's a little more easy and simple to do if you're the beginner. So, and like I said, if you're not a beginner, this would probably be a super easy project if you're really used to working with wood and making cuts. But for us, like I said, this is the first time we're making any angle cuts. Um, so it was a big project for us, but we did it. It took like a day and a half. It wasn't like super hard. I just want you to be aware going in, you are gonna stand there just staring at the project a lot, making sure it looks okay and making sure you're doing it correctly. Now we're on to the pocket holes and Chase was actually dreading this part of the project. And isn't it funny, the thing you're dreading most ends up being like the easiest and then the thing you thought was the easiest was kind of the hardest or took the longest. That was totally what happened during this project. Like everything he thought he was gonna be stressing out about turned out to be super easy and the things that were like, we didn't think were gonna be a big deal is like what took us forever just to make sure everything lined up and the shape and it was even. We wanted it symmetrical. We didn't want it like looking lopsided. So you just definitely have to be careful when you're making all those cuts. And as you can see right here, it's really starting to take shape. We have two more cuts. We want two boards to go up like angled on this, but the boys were going crazy that they couldn't see us. So they end up coming out to the garage with us for a little while. George has just gotten so well behaved. Now, if somebody were to come by on a bike, he would be gone. But as long as nobody's out, he'll just lay there and watch us. And both of them supervise Chase the entire time. Okay, and here is how it turned out. I think there's something so satisfying about watching Chase cut wood and then me using my shop vac to pick up all the sawdust. So I'm about to show you just a little like speed clean with me so you get a little cleaning motivation during this. Plus it's just super satisfying to watch.
Okay, so the good news is, is the hardest part is done. So from here on out, it is easy peasy. You've got the hardest part done if you've made it this far in your project. Now we're gonna stain this board. I'm gonna stain it in my garage because it's super windy and people are like mowing outside. So I like to put an old sheet down and then put it up on some wood so I can really get around it and it doesn't like stick to the sheet. And then I like to just use a paintbrush and just paint it on and then I'll take an old rag, just make sure it's clean so it doesn't get it dirty and just to wipe any of the excess off. Um, you did see Chase hand me just like a piece of wood to stain. We had never really stained cedar before and we use the same color stain all the time but we wanted to make sure it was gonna match like our flower boxes and our front door and our trash can fence and it did. It was perfect. The color turned out amazing. We're so happy with it. I'm about to show you some close-ups but this cedar wood is absolutely beautiful. So this is how it turned out after we stained it. I did want to mention we did stain the back. I didn't do like a perfect job on it because the wood on that side's a little bit rougher, but I did want to know if somebody like went and stood underneath it. It wasn't just raw wood on the other side and that it was protected by stain and matched. So now I'm going to go ahead and seal this. Definitely make sure you get an exterior stain. We love Thompson's water seal. Um, do not get like a poly coat. They will tell you it's made for the outside. It's not, take my word for it. We've learned the hard way. So definitely make sure you're getting an exterior um, sealer. And we're also gonna go ahead and do it on the back because I know when it rains here and it rains hard, water is gonna get all over this. So I just wanna make sure every piece of this wood is protected. So I'm sure most of you guys have seen this um, project right here because it was like one of my last videos. But once I finished it, we went and worked on the flower boxes. And when I had to put the second coat on those, it's like a whole thing. It's in the video, I'll leave it linked down below. My planter boxes went darker. So now I was needing to go ahead and sand this to kind of get that sealer off of it. And then I'm gonna do a second coat of stain over here so everything will match. I want this to match my flower boxes which matches my front door, which will match the gable. So everything's the same color wood. So I'm just gonna take that sander and get as much of that like finish off as I can. Chase is unscrewing the gutters because I couldn't get my sander back there and I definitely need to get that off because I want the whole thing re-stained. So I know you guys just saw me work on this, but this is kind of life. Sometimes you finish a project and you think you're done and you're not. So welcome to life. <laughs>
Although it's causing me more work, but I'm so glad it worked out the way it did. Adding the second coat of stain on here, this is the exact same color of stain. Um, it's just going darker because it's the second coat, but it's just so much prettier. It's richer. I feel like you see um, just the wood grain in it so much better. So, and like I said, now everything just flows so much better across the house. So it definitely worked out to be a win for us. Now, while I'm working on the other side, Chase is kind of cleaning off our white brick. So when I'm using the paintbrush, sometimes it splatters some of the stain over on the white brick and we definitely don't want to have that stain. So he was wiping that off and then kind of going behind me as I would like paint on the stain, he would go wipe off the excess. It's definitely teamwork when you do projects like this. What was so funny is we got to the last two and I ran out of stain. So Chase had to run all the way into town, buy more stain just for two boards. But like I said, Real life was happening with this project. We just didn't plan it out completely well. But now I'm gonna seal this. So I do wait for this to dry. So I waited like an hour to definitely make sure your stain is completely dry before you're putting the sealer on. I know it looks like in the video that I'm doing it right after, but we're definitely waiting, eating lunch, doing something, and then coming back and working on it. But now it's time to hang the gable and I'm so excited. We brought out this big ladder thinking we could set it up over there so I could help hold the gable while he was screwing in. But you're gonna see, we're gonna kind of finagle with it and we just couldn't get it in the flower bed safely. Like it was very topsy-turvy and it couldn't fit all the way in there. So he just decided to take it down and hang the gable himself. And it actually went fairly smoothly. He got to hold it up there. You're gonna see those clips here in a second it did not take him long at all so if he can hold that up there and drill it then it can't be that bad I will say the cedar was a lighter wood so that helped um, with holding it up there so just keep that in mind if you're looking at different types of wood cedar is lighter um, so it's gonna be easier to install and it's gonna last longer but you're gonna see him you can tell by the way he's carrying it it's not super heavy he did start screwing it in as he he was up there but it was really hard to get the screws going into it at that angle so he ended up bringing it down you're gonna see that here in a moment and getting the screws started down below then all he had to do was go hold it up there and screw it in because they were already started so definitely keep that in mind if you're doing this project Okay, so here is the final reveal. This is how it turned out. It is exactly what I wanted. Every time I kept seeing the side of the house, I've been wanting a gable for so long. And then as we added the wood elements, I wanted it even more, but I knew it would be a project, but um, I knew we could do it and we definitely did. Like I said, it took about a day and a half and that wasn't just straight work. You know, we had dinner and family over and different things. So you can definitely get it done if you want to and we are so happy with just the way it turned out and how much like look and feel it adds to the house so thank you guys so much for watching today's video definitely subscribe here if you're new i do lots of home projects diys cleaning shopping decorating organizing all that fun stuff and we'd love to have you here i hope you guys have a wonderful week and i'll see you in the next one bye